This video was sponsored by Envato Elements. In today's video, I'm turning your submitted drawings into realistic versions using Photoshop. They could be anything, creepy and terrifying, or wholesome and cute. Nothing is too crazy here. Let's not waste any time and get straight into today's drawings. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this brand new episode of Realistified, the show in which I turn your drawings into realistic looking images using Photoshop. As always, if you want to send your own drawing for a next episode, make sure to use Realistified at BennyProductions.net. Make sure to read the terms and conditions and hit the bell not to miss a single future video. No time to be wasted today, let's get straight into the first one. This drawing is insane. I love this. Hi, I would like to see my drawing realistified by you. Love your content. Well, thank you, Aki. This, I mean, this has so much potential. Look at this. It is crazy detailed, though. Usually, I would kind of stay away from this sort of stuff because it's too insane. But for once, I'm going to try it anyway because I guess I'm in a good mood. Let's get into it. Due to its repetitive nature, I can't go too deep into this one, but um, I'll cover the steps I took. As usual, I began tracing the basic shapes. In this case... 400 million ribs. That was a ton of fun. This reminded me why I never do this sort of stuff. But here we are. It was now time to add shadows to all of these elements to give it some depth. Starting with the rib cage. First, I put a bony texture inside so it doesn't look all that flat. And well, that's where the painting began. This hurt both mentally and physically, uh, but somehow I made it all the way down to the end. Uh, so. That was just the shadows and basic texture though. To give this at least some kind of overall depth, I added some subtle global textures on the right side of the dragon. As I had already decided, the light would come from the left side. Annoyingly though, the head and limbs were the exact same process all over again. And I suppose this does kind of explain perfectly why I can't do all drawings. Some of them end up being me repeating myself 5 million times. And that is, I mean, it's, it's fine for one drawing, the second, meh, but the third, it's gonna get real boring real fast. Anyway, after finishing the arms and legs and tail using the exact same techniques I mentioned just now, finally we could do something else, the background. My idea from the very beginning was to have this guy crawling over a rock surface, so here I went and put a rock texture in there. I slightly adjusted the lighting on there and began adding a nice dark shadow below the dragon. That helps putting him on the surface rather than having him float around like a maniac. Now I could have stopped here because this actually looks quite nice already, but I wanted some more detail in there so I decided some wooden debris and weapons lying around could be a fun detail to make it more lively. As if a huge medieval battle just took place and obviously this monstrosity won. All of these items are from Envato Elements so they already had a subtle shadow but I did enhance them just a bit, nothing special though. Now this next step is weirdly enough the most interesting thing about this drawing. I grabbed a cracked ground texture, I inverted that then brought it back to a black and white level, made the white a nice orange color, brightened the hell out of that, then duplicated that layer, added a glow on top, put it on screen so it's transparent and boom instant lava texture. I shoved it right under our lovely creature, added some subtle glow and a simple bevel to make it look as if it's actually in the stone. A camera raw filter finished it off to make it look a bit more crisp and bright. And well, this video better perform well because this was not supposed to take that long. Uh, Please like the video. I do love how it looks. It's creepy and dark and fresh as far as my edits go. I made an alternative version to this as well, which I think looks even nicer. It's got a bit of depth to it. So there you go. Now, as you know, Envato Elements has been a longtime sponsor of my channel and for a very good reason. Paid or not paid, I use Envato Elements in every single project ever. I use it almost daily. And in today's videos as well, you're gonna see me use a ton of 3D elements from their library. They are very convenient because you can choose your own angle that fits your artwork the best. But Besides that, there's a ton of really useful templates, Photoshop add-ons, and of course, stock photos and video. Personally, I couldn't live without it anymore at this point. If you're interested, make sure to use the link down below and get yourself an only $16 annual subscription for unlimited access to the entire thing. That's crazy, that's a steal. Anyway, link down below, now onto the next drawing. 
Dude, I love the vibe this has. Let's see what this guy has to say. Hi, Benny. Loved your videos for a while, and I thought this drawing of a time robot thing could look amazing if you put it through some Photoshop. Cheers, and hopefully I'm lucky enough for this to be seen. Well, it did get seen. Here we are. Uh, I love this. This is crazy. Very unique. It's going to be a ton of work, but um, let's do it anyway. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Photoshop. I'm going to build this guy up from a bunch of different shapes and elements and items. This is going to be a shit ton of work. However, this right here is perfect for his main body. Let's make sure that goes all the way until there. At the front, there is a giant clock for which I will use this guy. And then on top of that, I'll put another one like this to add some nice depth. And you already guessed it. All of these items are from Envato Elements. I suggest first we work on his main body and after that all the arms and limbs and heads and that sort of stuff. Just some of these little clocks over here. To be fair, I do think this one also is going to be slightly repetitive because basically I put in items and then blend them together and then... Well, that's pretty much it. I thought for his arm sockets, kind of, let's use this element, which I think might actually look quite nice. Up here, we've got a bunch of different pipes. So let's use various versions to make that work. We can use one of these for the attachment to his neck. Uh, by the way, for these, I just searched metal elements on Avado Elements 3D section. You get a bunch of really useful stuff. This is starting to look interesting. Let's try and blend this together just a little bit. I began with the main body shape. This needed some nice bevels and edges, so using shadows, I replicated those. The whole thing looked a bit wonky at first because of the reflections and shadows on the original shape, but as work goes on, this slowly gets resolved. From here on out, I blended each individual element onto the main body, using mainly hue and saturation for the bronze color, and of course, shadows and highlights to make sure the lighting looks a tad nicer. I would have light coming from two sides, but mostly from the left. Uh, there isn't too much to add. Here. See, that is looking quite nice and is basically what we're gonna have to do to the entire thing. I think one of these we can use for his arms over there. Let's roughly paint the shape like this and then on the end a sphere to attach it. And then for the lower arm, I thought maybe we can just use a bucket which we somehow attach to that, which of course is a problem for later. Just something like this. That might work. Yeah, for his fingers, I'm pretty sure this might work. All of the fine tuning for that is going to come in later. Behind it over here, there's a cuckoo cuckoo clock. I'm not sure what exactly it's called, but um, here you go. And I even found a perfect element for his tire. I mean, it's not the exact same shape, but that's close enough. We'll just have to put some steel elements in like this one, which might make it a bit more detailed like that. And some more elements for his little feet whatever the purpose of them is. And finally, of course, his head. I'm gonna use some of these clocks for those eyes. Two of the same ones, just a different angle. And the shape of his head, I'm actually gonna do manually to make sure it matches as close as possible. That, and also I couldn't really find something similar to this exact shape. So um, now that looks really interesting. And now we should be golden, or at least ready to blend all of this together as well. What a fun video this. I really wish I had something interesting to say here, but unfortunately, as you probably expected, this is me repeating myself 500 times. You're familiar with the way I do things by now. Reflections, highlights, and coloring. Nothing really that new. The reflections and lighting still was a bit of a challenge at this stage. It was a tad all over the place, but in the end, it's not as apparent. It is starting to look really quite steampunky. Um, now we do need to make it a bit more rough because it's very, very clean. And in gen- Oh, <laughs> not again. I'm developing a very bad habit of not saving my work. Allow me to try using a texture like this to hopefully make it a bit more eroded, destroyed. If we only just put it under here, already looks quite nice, but we are losing some depth. Let's see if we can use maybe overlay or soft light and like that. And then we just need to use some liquify to make sure we get that round shape in there. See, before and after, that's very nice. And to be fair, we can really just put that all over this robot. It might look nice. Just adding some roughness to it here and there. There you go. It even gives it some color definition. I like it. Dude, check this out. That looks awesome. Very nice. Another thing I would like to try is making a scratch like this. And then if we go into outer bevel over here, see, we might be able to create kind of that effect so that we can very easily like this, just paint some scratches on there. What if we just put the fill on zero like this? So it becomes more of a texture instead. All right, I like it. Here you go. We can just kind of paint some dots, some dents, 
some scratches. And the great thing is, this really goes on anything. We can even put them on here. This is fantastic. And just like that, we can really roughen this up. I love this. The only thing we didn't have yet is the bird on here. With a shadow or two, that should be easy work. There you go. Beautiful. Now, with all of that in place, I think before finalizing it, we first need a background, an environment. So let's go ahead and do that. The real OGs of this channel know that I've used this image before, but um, watch me be a savage and use it again. I made a nice shell below the robot, making sure it looks like he's touching the ground. And after that, I decided to go with a nice hazy vibe. With a simple solid color, I began painting some mistiness, followed by a very subtle orange light coming from the right. Based on these conditions, I applied additional highlights to the robot and after all that some gears lying around on the floor seemed like a nice final touch. For a final little grade I'm using camera raw once again, this time going for a more yellowish tint and of course the same crispiness you're used to seeing in my artwork. With all that wrapped up I present to you the end result. Definitely my favorite for today, I love the vibes and of course the fact that it's a robot, I don't often do these kind of things. I went my own route with it for sure, it's quite different than the original drawing especially in terms of details but I'm happy with it and that is what matters. Now quickly in between, if you become a member of this channel today, you get early access to future videos. This can range from a day early to a week early. On top of that, I see all your comments and try to reply as fast as I can. And of course, the badges and emojis. So it's pretty cool. It helps out the channel greatly. So if you're interested, use the join button down below and become a member. Dude, look at this guy. All right. Hi, my name is Logan Blackburn. I'd love it if you can do one of my drawings in an episode of Realistified. Thank you. Please pick any one of these. Uh, this is the one I picked. I think this is insane. It looks very, very creepy, very off-worldy. So honestly, let's get straight into it because I think this one might turn out pretty freaking epic. Six and a half hours later. Um, the stuff I had to go through to find images for this... Never again. The horrors I have seen, it is unimaginable. Let's cut this monstrosity out. Because this does seem great for his main body, it does need some work because this is of course the other side. I remember now why I always cut stuff out before recording. <laughs> this was a mistake. Oh, finally, there you go. Beautiful. Let's put that in here and see how in the Lord's mercy are we ever gonna... Oh, hey. Hey! <laughs> that fits weirdly well. And then all we need is a bunch of puppet warp to make sure the shape lines up. And for now, we'll just use a bit of a dark gray background. And then I'm using a second layer to kind of add those back scales because technically we've been making this the wrong way around. However, this is a non-existent creature, so we can absolutely get away with it and remove all the axes and we are golden. We're not there yet, but I guess it's a start. <laughs> Mainly right now, we need to focus on the colors. The back side of him is blue and the inner side is yellow. I will grab a U and saturation layer and make that blue. And just like this, I'm gonna go all over the back side. This is going to look very weird at first, but trust the process. I say that to myself as much as I'm saying it to you. Then the front, I'm pretty sure we can just make that a bit more yellowish like this. For his head, I thought maybe we can just use his skull. Um, I suppose there's only one way to find out. It's all gonna come down to liquify again. First, let's go ahead and try aligning the shape of the skull. Especially this side has to be a whole lot slimmer. Why do I feel like this is gonna look incredibly dumb? Like, what in the universe is that? <laughs> I do think in here we can just kind of make the teeth uh, nice and sharp so we don't have to do that manually. As you know, teeth are always the most fun part. And there you go, that is looking fantastic. Now before trying to fix this horrendous situation, let's first draw the eyes on here, actually. There, we'll make them white for now. And then using shadows, we're gonna have to put some shape into this, because this is truly a disaster. First off, around the eye sockets, we're gonna need some shadows to make sure these eyes are integrated into the skull. Kind of like that. Just like that. That looks amazing. Then in the center, we've got this line going on. Let's go ahead and try to make that work, preferably without making it look like an ass. And using some very subtle highlights, we can even enhance that 3D effect. Hey, there you go. I told you we could make this work. The eyes desperately need some of that 3D effect as well. I mean, this shouldn't be too difficult, right? And some lovely, lovely highlights. A little bit sharper this time. It is really all pretty straightforward. You just need to know what to do, I suppose. And right now, seems like a good time to put the lower jaw in there as well. So we just position it in there and make sure it connects 
connects to the skull. Pretty much just stretching this out all the way there. <laughs> just gotta fill in the inside of his mouth like so. Look at that, it is getting shaped. As for those horns, that's gotta be the most easy thing ever, right? Just putting one of these in. We'll kind of just erase the areas we don't need and go with this part. Bunch of shadows to match it with the rest. You know how this goes by now. One more thing though, it also has some kind of hairs. I mean, what is that? I guess we'll just make uh, prickly thingies. There are kind of hairs, spikes, I don't know. I mean, look at this and tell me this doesn't look just delicious. What you also might have noticed, his head is pink for some reason. So, well, let us go ahead and make that happen. Must say, not the biggest fan of a pink head, but it is what it is. And his teeth are not included in that lovely color theme like that. That's more like it. Pretty sure we have everything apart from, of course, his feet. Uh, that is gonna be something. I actually had trouble finding good pictures of feet from centipedes, so instead I went with a crab, because those are basically the same thing. Besides, this is an alien, so we can do whatever the hell we want. Just one by one, putting them in place. Last one over here. And now, you know what we're gonna have to do. Fun. 2,000 years later. Well, I suppose here you go. My colors are ever so slightly different from the original because I do like the blue and pink most of all. But now it is time to put this guy in a bit of a nicer environment uh, and make it look a bit more spicy and nice. Usually in these episodes we do three drawings, but today I thought why not just do four? So here's the fourth one. This one's a bit more simple, but every now and then I do like doing this sort of stuff as well. Um, hey Benny, I saw your videos on YouTube and I'm really impressed. Could you realistify my drawing? I would really like to see it. Have a nice day. Pascal. Thank you, Pascal. This looks very nice, very clean. I'm sure we can make this work. For this one, I found basically all items on Envato Elements. I did want to make sure all the things I used matched the original shapes as best as possible, so I cut up some stuff to make it work. The only thing that did end up looking very different was the skull and the liquid in the vial. Changing the liquid would have been a huge pain, but most importantly, the skull, it's kind of small, so I made that bigger. Uh, because it seemed nice. Nonetheless, it all looked decent once placed, so now I moved on to the blending process. At first, this was mainly just ambient shadows because I didn't have an environment yet to base my lighting on. To bring this to life, I added a table underneath using a simple wooden texture and behind that a medieval style room. I blurred that a bit for a nice depth of field and this is where lighting was determined. Clearly from above and the left. To give this a stronger and more creepy vibe, I went with a greenish tone over the whole thing. Mainly the light outside would have this tint, making it feel just a bit more eerie. To kind of fill up the background, I popped in a bunch of medieval style items, starting with a cauldron. This really is the same exact process again. Apart from the candle, of course, that did require some nice glows. I kind of just missed a second light source and this was how I can get away with it. On the table itself I added some more elements as well, like a bowl, some medieval scissors and some random spices that I guess were used in the making of this deadly potion. Once everything was nicely blended together it was time for a final camera raw filter and poof. There's our potion vial. Poison. Va po poison potion. 
vile. It's nothing too special, I personally prefer the creature ones anyway, but it's nice nonetheless, a fine addition to the collection. I think overall we've done some solid work, I really really love the dragon and the robot, they're very nice, very new also. And once again, if you want to send your drawing for a next episode, make sure to use realistified at bennyproductions.net and read the terms and conditions. Don't forget to check out Envato Elements down below if you're interested, and then I guess for today, that is it. If you enjoyed this video, make very sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell not to miss a single future video, then I hope I'll see you in the next episode. Oh, bloody hell.